good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you're all in good health and in good spirit. I am Ninjani, the Curator of Education and Public Program at Museum Machan, and this is a very special artist talk session we're having today. November is Museum Machan's anniversary month, and to start this month-long celebration, I am so happy to welcome you in all this uh, online event in conversation with Melati Suryodarmo. Melati Suryodarmo is a performance artist based in Surakarta, Indonesia, best known for her physically challenging and long durational performance arts pieces, which are the result of ongoing research in the movements of the body and its relationship to the self and the world. Melati Suryodarmo has presented her work in various international festivals and exhibition. And this talk is done in time as we enter the final two weeks of Melati's survey exhibition while at the chicken run at Museum Machan. So, Joining us today is the artist herself, Melati Suryodarmo, and Museum Machan's director, Aaron Sito. They will talk about Melati's exhibition and how the ongoing COVID-19 disruptions have impacted the experience. Of particular interest is Melati's desire to retain an embodied presence throughout the exhibition and avoiding shifting programs online and onto digital platforms when so much conversation has been invested in digital connectivity. So how do artists imagine a future for physical programming? And this session is broadcasted live from the museum and safety protocols have been conducted prior to the broadcast. So without further ado, over to you, Aaron and Mbak Melati. Um, and good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon from Jakarta. Uh, hello to all of our online audiences. I hope you are doing well where you are. I'd like to introduce you to our guest today, Melati Sridhamu. Uh, she's a leading artist. She's based in Solo. And she returned to Indonesia after being in Europe for quite a while. She returned back to Indonesia in about 2011. And her performance work is influential the world over and is a, currently the subject of a major career survey currently on show here at Museum Machan. Malati studied in Germany under the, the tutelage of Marina Abramovich and Anzu Furukawa, and her work, your work is informed by Butoh, which is the post-war Japanese avant-garde approach to the body, to movement and to dance. And her work is characterized by a commitment to endurance uh, with an exploration of the body and the self in context with society, culture, and history. To me, Malati's practice is extremely important because it connects us to life rather than to the stage. Um, and it's definitely performance that attempts to work through the complexity of our cultural experiences, of traditions, and the histories of Indonesia from which emerge new ideas rather than formulas around concepts of national identification. So welcome back, Malati. It's been, Hi. It's been a while. <laughs> it's, been a while. Uh, it's really great to be in the same room, room as you. And congratulations for the, for the uh, performances uh, this last weekend. Um, Thank you. Thank you for keeping my exhibition for such a long time and, you know, like keeping my work safe inside the museum um, during the pandemic. Actually, we wanted to start again uh, in July, but then, you know, even in July was the worst case coming up. Yeah, of course. And so then we had to cancel again. And now finally, these last two weeks is going to be, you know, it's, I feel I need to fulfill <laughs> my duty and my uh, desire also like to, to perform again. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to the um, the issues around performance and how you're you're reapproaching um, um, presenting these presenting these works. But to be true, to be to just to map that out again. I mean, who would have thought three years ago we would have been closed for almost nearly two years? Yes. Um, um, you know that the pandemic has made a big impact on on everyone. I think in terms of their individual self and how, how you work, how you research and how you present to the public. And I think that, that these are some of the issues that I really want to talk to cover mm -hmm. off today, especially which we've discussed quite a bit 
this issue of the digital mm -hmm. and the transformation of live performance mediated through the screen. I know that you've got some strong opinions about, um, about this shift and what it, what it means, not uh, philosophically as well as, as, well as uh, what it might mean in terms of uh, greater accessibility for people. But um, before we get there, I thought it might be useful to kind of map this discussion out into three parts. For, we'll, we'll, get to the, we'll get to this issue of the digital. I also would love to, to hear about um, how you're approaching the, the final weekends, the final two weeks of, the, of this exhibition, where we've got some of the, some of the key works that, that we built this whole exhibition around. Mm -hmm. So um, this Friday, we have Alalino. This um, uh, Saturday and Sunday, Transaction Apollos. And the next uh, week, Behind the Light on Friday. And we, we end the weekend on Saturday with Butter Dance. Mm -hmm. It's a work that hasn't been performed for a while. And it's mm -hmm. probably the work which sits in people's memories about um, um, or how, they how they imagine you. But I really want to talk about, firstly, performance and performance art. You know, those of our, of our audiences who have been following this exhibition will have heard us talk about performance art a lot over the last two years. But let's go back to basics. I really want to hear from you. What is performance art? How did you come to it? What do you think it means? How do you approach it? Mm -hmm. um, it's, a long, it's a long story, you know, because we also know that uh, actually performance art practitioners, they also have possibility to define them by themselves what is performance art practice. Uh, <clears throat> according to the... Um, uh, art historian, of course, performance art is uh, an artwork that is using the body as a main medium. It relates with the time and space. And, you know, it's more like the history from the conceptual art and then fluxes and happening and so on. So that the body is, a, is the work. The action is the work. The action is most important part actually so the body even can be replaced by other bodies right so that that means that uh, a performance artwork is something is a work that is creating a new reality on site and it happens just that time so the many many people misunderstood or they it's i mean like we are living in a free world so <laughs> people even uh, art practitioners performance art practitioners they also think that um you once you do performance you just you do just once you don't repeat because i do repeat i redo my performance work and <clears throat> it's 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 a freedom of this, this decision you know like uh because for me that one time is every time I redo is the different experience. So performance art for me is a work that is considering the, the experience of change, of a process. So that means that when I create a performance work, the work is completed when it is, uh, you know, when it is done. So when it is uh, performed, so before it is performed, it's not yet completed. Mm. I complete my thought, I complete my research, I complete the preparation and everything, but it's not yet the work. The work is completed when the people there or not the people there, if, for example, because I can also perform in the landscape with the audience, but when I'm doing my action, I'm doing my activity um, on a specific time and space with mm. the whole everything, you know. And, and then is the work is completed. So for the audience, how to see a performance artwork? To see performance artwork at best is when it's live, because the participations of the presence of the, of the audience is a part of the, you know, like the constellation or the relationship of the energy, the connections and, and being there because uh, to experience a performance uh, art, in a, as a live work is different than, you know, like just watching the, the documentations or the mm. photo documentation or video documentations. Because individually people can experience differently. Mm. It's not like a theater, it's not like a dance. There's no choreography, there is no dramaturg 
dramaturgy, there's no script. You know, the, the, narr the narration of the work is created there, is, is appearing there. Because um, performance art, for me, I believe that the situation of the situation in my surroundings, my body, my inner uh, condition is, is influencing even, uh, if, even if I have, um, you know, very prepared conceptual work and so, but then it, it is accumulated with conditions. So um, that's why every time I do the same work, then it has a different experience because my life is in the process. My life is changing and our surrounding is changing constantly. Yeah, so, so the, the, this, this uh, uh, being in the process of life, for me, is performance art. But that, that's also, um, you know, the, even the practice is uh, very much attached with, with life, yeah. So how did you come to performance? Um... Wow, it's a long story, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, because, you know, like, <clears throat> I was I was asked about embodied knowledge recently, mm -hmm. and um, how how do I come to performance art, for example? It's a long story because my parents, my I grew up uh, in in the artist environment, and uh, performing artist, dancer, they're dancers and musicians, and it, it shapes also uh, culturally my you know my cultural body <laughs> somehow that. Uh, being a performer or dancer or, or having a body to perform is, is not something new. So I'm very familiar with this and how, pe how my mother, like, you know, like to watch my mother was dancing when I was a child. It's like also like a kind of a um, given knowledge, yeah, indirectly. But then, you know, I saw a documentary of Joseph Boys, I like America, America like me, uh, at the Good Institute in Bandung in 1988 or 89, something like that. And then I met, you know, Maritan Sirait and then Tisna Sanjaya. But that time I did not study art, I studied international politics at the uh, social political uh, faculty. Um, but then I studied art in Germany. I met Antu Furukawa, who studied, who, whose background was actually Buto. I thought Buto was a dance. Buto is actually very performance, more like in performance art because the concept of uh, becoming is very strong. It's not about the form, form like like you understanding the dance, but it's like how how your body becoming something. It's it's very conceptual work on body. We, by using movement, imaginations, and the trust to energy, what is coming to your body at that time and that space. And then Marina Abramovic, of course, introducing me on everything. She's, she's like, uh, she's a very good teacher. She was very uh, good teacher, very nurturing, very caring, so that she actually, uh, so, so to speak, um, educate us to to understand art, not only by producing artwork to be, you know, like, I don't know, like making like artwork, but also how to deal with life within the process of making. So that was a very important part um, from, from, the, from, the, from the, her teaching, yeah. And I chose performance art because I think, um, looking back at the history, I think it's, you know, it's not a theater because I was quite, since I was a child, I felt like I was a bit discriminated because I'm not tall, I'm not skinny, <laughs> you know, my nose is, you know, flat and, you know, always like those little, little kind of uh, little discriminations, but everywhere, you know, it's like my body was like, like, a, you know, like a teenager and you, you felt like discriminated. Mm. And and, and uh, even, you know, in the theater, in the dance and in any kind. So, then I saw this uh, work of Boy Yosef Boys. I thought, well, this is not a theater. This is not a dance. This is something that I really love, you know. And I thought, um, uh, I thought that something is is new for me, like an, an alternative. That oh, it is another way to use body to express something. And then I learned more of history of uh, art. 
in, in, in Europe, then I thought this, this has a very strong resistant quality, mm. especially also the, the movement of the feminist uh, of female artists uh, who, are, who are using performance art like Anna Mendieta and Kate Wilde, Yoko Ono, and also Marina Abramovich herself, um, like promoting the spirit of presence of women. And so uh, behind that uh, spirit, I've, I saw uh, a lot of freedom. And so for me, art is, is, is serving freedom. Art is uh, encouraging freedom also for people. So performance art for me is also like to be independent from, um, you know, uh, like just being an object. Hmm. Like to understand art is beautiful. So, so I like to, to, to deal with more like these fluid borders, you know, between the, the, the old aesthetic and new aesthetic, or whatever kind of aesthetic, you know, and always like, okay, you know, like, like moving. So the position of performance art even until today is always, you know, like shifting and well, you know, in the market they say, yeah, you, it's performance art, it's there, it's cool, but you cannot collect, you know. And then in, in the museum area, in the, in the more serious historical discourse, okay, what is the spirit of this work, you know, and then the, it's also, and then in the theater, oh, it's a different way of expressing, mm. you know, and then in dance now. So now it's actually very interesting time uh, since the last 10 years that, that dance, theater, performance art intertwining, uh, you know, intertwining practice is uh, quite, you know, a very good, very interesting mm. way. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's why also now performance art is a little bit uh, like people are not so unfamiliar anymore. So everyone's hearing performance art, performance art. So. I must say, though, it does present particular challenges to present because, mm. um, um, you know, I think that you've, you've articulated quite well that it, it is moving, it is live in, 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 the, in that sense. And, um, um, you know, the way that I often describe it is that it requires you to be present right? when most of, lots of other exhibitions, you can come and see it at, at, at at your leisure, really, when, when it fits mm. into your schedule. But there was one point that you brought up. You, you, brought, you brought up this idea of embodied knowledge. And I want to talk about this in the context of your kind of uh, very international um, presence, because I think, at least here in Indonesia, people talk about you as, you know, you studied overseas, you've got lots of, you, you've, you've had these opportunities to present, you, your, your work uh, circulates in a, in a much more, in a much broader context. But this idea of embodiment, I'm really curious about maybe bringing it back to this, uh, what you say about how you became aware of performance. Do you think that you bring something very particular in terms of uh, Javanese culture, history, et cetera, to that broader um, idea of performance? You know, um, I'm just learning, uh, you know, when, when I make art, I was actually very, when I begin my career, I was very insecure person. I always like, uh, you know, like we, we call it minority complex. <laughs> You know, I, I like it's not that, but but something because I grew up with my art in Germany, so I felt lack of confidence actually, and then uh, Marina said uh, and Antu also encouraged, well you have to be close to your life, you have to to come up with your personal life, and your your individual as a starting point to connect with things. So then then I think okay this is very. Um, Actually, I'm not unfamiliar with this practice, you know, because mm. like, um, I, you know, like I, I, I was trained in the uh, Javanese meditations, I was trained in Javanese dance and, and everything is like about this, the inner, inner being. And so uh, this, this specifically about, you know, the value of the inner being is, is not something that, okay, I'm talking about my life. No, it's not like that. There is a long way of, uh, in the process of making a work that I don't want to show my personal life to people. I don't want to, um, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, what is it, uh, crop, uh, looking for, for empathy from people about my life. No, it's, it's really, I'm absolutely not like that. I don't, 
Also, I, I don't want to be seen as cultural representations. This is one thing because I think my relationship with my country, my relationship with my culture is, uh, is dangerous. I think it, I cannot be a representative of my culture. Mm. You know, I am a Javanese Indonesian, a woman. I can be a, anything you, you want to see me, you know. But although I define myself, I am just Melati <laughs> daughter and of my father and, and my mother, and I live there, you know, I'm just no one for, for you know, like a mother of my daughter, for example. But this kind of identifications and so on is normally attached with, is something that attached to us. But also it is shaped by us mm. with a long, 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 long history. If I unveil my uh, uh, cultural genetic here, I use a cultural genetic, yeah. yeah. Then I, I, I will see a lot of, um, you know, uh, a lot of small ways back to I don't know, like, um, I don't know, like ten cent, ten centuries or fifteen centuries, or even the nearest memories, probably the memory of colonialism or the memories of uh, Mataram, you know, or Majapahit, because we, I live in Java. But that is not the way I want to see, uh, you know, my culture uh, as an object of my uh, artwork research. Mm. You know, it's different. It's, I just want to see, okay, I only understand that Javanese has the value of rasa, for example, the sensing, the, the capacity of sensing, of, of valuing uh, environment, atmosphere, and so, and, and feeling, personal feeling, and sensing what is really happening. So, and that's why for Javanese, it takes sometimes a while to, to arrive because they, they used to and see first. And so, and then but other modern people would say, Javanese people are slow. Hmm. <laughs> so this this way of this, this simple experiences, I make me think, or oh, maybe uh, the tool we are having to see our culture is is not suitable. And then then the question of a long history of colonialism, and then a long history of after the Second World War, and then you know the new order in Indonesia, how we are shaped uh, as a nation. You know how we are shaped as as a member of the nation. You know culturally by by the government, by the power system, power relations, and so on. But also um, then then I can see okay um, if if I re made the research, for example, I, I was ashamed when I visited the Bisu in uh, back in two thousand two in South Sulawesi. I felt like. At that time, I cried a lot because I felt like how I don't know how to do with this. But I don't want to be like a cultural tourist. Mm. I don't want to be like those uh, artists who are making research by okay, what's that and what's that, and then you know I'm just because of my name because I think that is interesting. You know? So so that is different. I don't want to objectify you know mm. uh, um, culture, uh, but I want to to learn something that is uh, is also useful for my life, not necessarily for the for my making art to work. So that's a different thing. Well, as I said before, I think that um, firstly, performance practice kind of throws us big challenges to present. Oh. But then also these, um, you know, these very strong convictions about how to work and how to be curious about other things makes it sometimes difficult for curators and institutions to deal with because they want to put you in that in that in that little box so yeah. I think that your practice in that way really does um, remind us to be curious I think rather than to be um, to, to deconstruct or to, um, yeah. to to be rational because you know like content for making a contemporary artwork what is it you know so like for example we, we tend to make like a contemporary artwork should should be uh, like equal with the value and the aesthetical value of the mostly by the Western how how to see a contemporary work. Mm. 
But then if you turn back, like contemporary art practice is something that is appearing from your present life, the, nearer the nearest environment of your life where you are, then the reality, we are still very close with ritual. We are still very close with uh, like, maybe not in Jakarta, but people in Solo, uh, very, still very close with, you know, like the way of living, uh, the, the cultural way of living is totally different. And I'm sure like in the East Indonesia, in Sulawesi, in, in Sumatra, they're, they're very close with, uh, with their origin, origin, culture of their origin. And then, uh, and then we are making art that is probably uh, still dealing with uh, the practice of traditional uh, culture, right? And then you think, okay, I want to know about what is those uh, ceremonial uh, elements? What, what do this object they do in the ceremony, uh, uh, you know, symbolizing? What, what, what symbol they carry? Why people, uh, why my grandmother, you know, like doing this every Thursday night, you know, like an offering in, in the corner of, of her houses and, you know, using holy incense and this kind of thing. And then, ah, and then as a child, it's embodied, it's embodied because we, we, we saw this practice. But then later when it was not there anymore, then I asked, I remembered, and you know, there's the recalling a memory Recalling memory that it was an experience of, you know, when I was a child. And that is still very close, you know, 30 years or 40 years distance is still short, you know. And it's not impossible to track. It's not impossible to re-question. And then re-question with my, my presence uh, condition, my presence uh, being, and then and, uh, asking again, so why it's been gone, for instance? Where are those symbols? How do we relate with the, with the nature? Now, what, what means, how to communicate with, with the spirit, for example. So then, <laughs> then the problem is, wow, that's interesting. You know? For me, it's not to impress you, for example. It's like my necessity. Mm. It's a necess necessity to, to reconnect or to to recalling those memory in a different way. But I'm not, um, I used to, to talk like, oh, this is about power. Like I, I was uh, asking, um, making research about Rayak, the, you know, like the, the traditional uh, ritual dance performance, which is actually now commodified, commodified as a tourism uh, uh, performance, performance for tourism. But actually it was like, uh, it was meant, it was created for, for protesting the power. And then that time I analyzed, uh, you know, using Foucault, Michel Foucault to, to analyze Rayok. And then I feel like, what is going on with you, Mulati? <laughs> like, it's not, it's not correct. It's not, uh, it's not the right tool for me to uh, actually to really then, you know, get close to that. And then I, I look for how to get close to that, you know. And then I recall my memory, okay, when I will witness the Rayok performance when I was five years old and my grandmother was carrying me to, to Taman Sri Wadari in Solo to see that, that very scary performance actually because one of the dancers is eating glass, you know, like bulbs and then and becoming like trans and so on. But I was very close to this performance. And then I experienced this like, oh, there is something that is very uncontrolled coming in that is the process of becoming that is a kind of a catharsis that is kind of a, of cleansing you know and and uh, as representations of the chaos of the society so but not about uh, about you know not necessarily about political why Rayok and then why now the the man is replaced you know like the the pretty man is replaced to pretty girls, you know, now and this and, and this kind of thing. So, um, but that's also one aspect, you know, that there is a freedom to, to see, of course, what we have. But I prefer to, to choose what I have experienced and, and what I have in my memory and what I have, uh, what, what questions I still carry 
So I start working from questioning. Okay. <laughs> let's let's change gear a little bit. This is the um um you know one of the things that we've spoken a lot about over the last nearly two years has really you know there's been a massive shift um a society-wide shift to digital and virtual engagement and it's a completely uh, different world that we live now compared to maybe what we lived two years ago you know our kids are educated at home conversations yeah. with loved ones are done on zoom um the physical and the intimate which is one of the demands i think of performance art or at least your kind of performance art is um those physical and intimate moments are mediated by the screen um and probably this was the case before the pandemic but i think that it's just been accelerated and you and i have had a lot of conversations at the beginning of the um at right at the beginning of the pandemic in about February and, and March, when we were trying to work out what to do, you were pretty adamant that broadcasting performances was not was not an option. It was just something that you had thought about and you just didn't you, you weren't prepared to um, engage with. And then a little later in about maybe about um, probably at the beginning of the year, you started to beginning of last year, you started to to rethink it. And in June of this year, we um, presented an online performance of the promise, and let's um, share that now with the with the um, with our audience. So this was this was at the time no one could travel. You were in your studio, and we were in in Jakarta. And I think that one of the things that we notice. Um, let's play the let's play the clip. Is well, firstly, this is the work called The Promise. Uh, it's a very emotional work, I think. It's one of, it's one of the, um, uh, it's a, you know, it's, it, it really carries a lot of um, um, trauma and, and, and emotion with it. But as we, as we zoom out of it, you will see that this is not in a sterile white box mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. um, if you can listen really closely, there are frogs, there are, there are insects chirping and, um, you know, you and I have discussed since this that probably your experience of the of this performance was completely different to to at least my experience. Um, let's flip to the to, to the slides and and this is actually for me how I how I experienced this work. Um, and you know, even even though you had all of these hesitations about wanting to present it, it completely resonated. I think at that moment with you know lots lots of people. This is after dinner time. You know, the kids were kids were in in, in were, were, were going to bed, and this work I know is you created in relationship to your to to, to your mum. Mm -hmm. And you know that you can understand that there's something quite um, traumatic that's going on, and mm -hmm. and at mo at moments in the performance you're emotional and you can see that you're see that you're crying but then at the same time we're completely separated mm -hmm. it's happening in a in a in a it's not happening on a it's happening in a place some, some, somewhere else and it just amplified for me the distance mm -hmm. at, at, the, at that time so yeah I'm, I'm just curious about you know what went through what was going through your mind about and why did you change your mind about um about the digital you know um Besides studying performance art, I also studied experimental film. Sometimes I, I made video works and make a, like you know I, I studied really like how to document also performance art. I started using umatic beta and and eight millimeter and sixty millimeter and and all uh, you know mini diff and all the history of into now the four K. I'm still four K five K. I don't know what what's coming up again, you know, the future of the digital world. And uh, in my knowledge, uh, strongest knowledge of the digital or, or moving image language is there is a strong reduction. There is a strong reduction. That means uh, your interpretations is, is, led, led, yeah, is led by the camera, which is shooting the object. So if, as a performer, if you do not understand um, uh, how the camera works, how, how lens and ob objective and camera can influence 
uh, you know, the, the, the fewer. But in the film, film director, uh, director of photography for the film, they're, they're educated, they, they, they worked up to translate, mm. actually. And performance art needs, uh, if it's like this, I was just not so sure if I would be a good director for, for a live streaming myself. Mm. I can uh, direct the cameraman, you know, like from which angle and so on for a documentation. For a live uh, streaming, I'm not uh, in control. You know, I'm not, uh, you know, just, okay. So it's up to the cameraman and uh, up to the, the you know, uh, mixer, director, switcher, and so on. Uh, but um, of course there is, even like in the live performances, everyone has a different way to interpret the, the mm -hmm. work. So I consider that um, there is, of course, like once I present my work for the public, there's a free interpretation. It's free, it's, it's unpredictable and I cannot control and I do not want to control people's mind, you know. So by using the medium, you know, the, the digital uh, medium, I think uh, what I can share is what I do not want to lose is like the language. Mm. There, there is a need, a careful need to understand how to translate the life language into the moving image on screen. Besides, there's a, there is a, you know, like, okay, there's gonna be like, if internet is not smooth, then it's gonna be bad. If your equipment, your gadget is not good enough, there will be not so good uh, uh, resolution to, and everything can be with technology, digital technology. But how to overcome this in a very simple way? Mm. So for me, it was important, like, okay, we set up three cameras. One is steady, one is from that angle, and one is for close-up. So in, if that moment is uh, quite important, you know, like people, the cameraman is there. So I really collaborate with cameraman and, and my assistant is uh, helping them to, or to which, which switching, you know, switching which camera, yeah. that, because there were three cameras. And, and that, that helps, that helps a lot. It, Last year I did yeah, I did not think that it would be possible, you know. But also not all of my work is mm. is uh, appropriate enough uh, for for this uh, mean. Mm. And uh, then I need to select which one I can think, uh, you know, I can translate into uh, streaming language mm. and live streaming. My experience is of course the same. Where I'm doing live or not, mm. yeah, I'm doing live or live streaming or live here because the intention is not because the viewer its intention intention is mm. coming from myself, but the, the viewer experience uh, are different, mm. and this I need to consider. So uh, my task to decide, but, but while I was deciding, okay, is like to to pro, to provide a more open possibility for the public to to have at least a nearer experience like when they see me live. Mm. And that is using different language. It's not just one camera and just, you know, with a mobile phone like this, mm. it's not enough. That's why uh, the, you need some um, yes, practical knowledge about this. And, and of course, um, yeah, considering those uh, history of image, <laughs> for example, mm -hmm and uh, history of lens and, and, and performance art documentations. Mm. And so I think, um, although I, spiritually, I, I really want, uh, really still want to keep, of course, I'm very faithful with bodies, body, body's presence. Mm. Because I think it's even later, even more advanced uh, technology, digital technology overcoming the life presence of any art. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we heard about NFT and whatever, you know, but, um, but then, then if we are consistent with, I, th I thought if I want to, to encourage people more to value the presence of body as the, the most sustainable art medium. Mm -hmm. 
So that that uh, because Bali will be there anyway, you know, in the future. We are not well. Maybe like you go later to office with hologram. I don't know. You don't. You just stay at here? home and then <laughs> you walk around in your museum as a hologram. You know, like we we never know. You know, and then you just we, we don't know. And how how would be um, how would a body transferred in the future? I think that it's really you've you've. It's also a challenge again. I'm bringing it back to to also our experience of of doing this is that um it's a challenge for us as well because when people say we're going to put it online or we're going to stream it, we have to be very clear that this is not entertainment in that kind mm. of um, transactional sense. But but how do we and you know working in in Indonesia, this is something that we've carried right from the beginning of the of the museum is that. How do we utilize? These are very, very powerful tools. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, I won't say that they're democratic, but I think that they have the ability to reach more, reach more people than 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 other than potentially walking into walking into into a museum. So, how do we actually transform these uh, spaces, Instagram, social media, YouTube, as sites of production mm -hmm. rather than simply ent entertainment? And I think that that's it, that is also part of the, the curatorial challenge that's ahead of us. It's, you know, um, I'm okay even performing in the landscape if there is no people coming for, as an audience. Because mm. for me, doing performance art is not just to, to perform, to show. It's not a show. Mm. It's, 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 an, it's an art of doing. It's like in, Jahan, in Indonesia, what is it like? It's the walk of life, you know? So, so there is something that for me, um, that perform, uh, performance art make me uh, possible to think that way. You know, like if, uh, um, okay, let's say, let me make an example, a painting, painting, like if someone is making a painting painter make a nice painting for his, his and then the collector bought collector bought and put it in the kitchen you know and then the painter saw oh my work is put in the kitchen you know and there must be something like but this work is about my daughter or about my wife who passed away or like quite an important thing but then collector thought yeah but this event is suitable in my kitchen you know so Painter cannot control either, you know. Once, once the work is for the public, you cannot control the public. Mm. That's what I what I think. Uh, uh, no matter how people treat me on YouTube, for example, according to my butter dance, then I thought it's a consequence. Actually, my daughter uh, taught taught me or told me, hey, "Mama, you should be very cool, yeah, about this." So she said, "Why?" Yeah, it's it's just you too. It, you YouTubers are like that. They can say everything. They can like, dislike, hate you, or love you. So once you, once you are on YouTube, you have to be ready with them, Mama. Like, oh yeah, thank you. Because you know she was uh, like uh, she was fifteen that time. Mm. <laughs> you see, like. So I was like, oh, I learned from, from my daughter who is like a, from the millennial generation. Mm -hmm. So how to deal with this? And that, that's also then, uh, you know, that like make me to think like what I want, how I choose, how I want to deal with this. You know, nowadays, like everyone in Indonesia, maybe, maybe it'd be different each countries, yeah? But Indonesia is ex extreme uh, user of, of uh, uh, social media. Mm -hmm. You know, even even official communication is through mm -hmm. WhatsApp. You know, it's a, like it's uh, even I don't like. I have to to agree with that because otherwise, otherwise thing doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But uh, how do we need to stop that? You know, well, you can't stop. It. We can't stop, and we just need to respond in a smart way. Mm -hmm. So uh, the pandemic is forcing artists who are using bodies like dancers choreographers or like musicians who used to uh, to have a you know show um, 
concert, live concert, theater companies and so on, they, they cannot perform. All theaters are closed or theater building closed or, or event closed and, and for uncertain time. And there were like very uneasy, uneasy bodies, you know, last year, especially that because uh, uh, creativity need to be, oh, you know, del delivered somewhere. And then bang, there is like, okay, competitions, let everyone is dancing from home. And then like thousands of people applying, for example, for, for uh, dancing from home uh, um, competitions, you know. And, and it's very interesting how people then uh, trying to cross this border, you know, how to, how to uh, overcome the limitations mm. of space. How to overcome the the um, how do you say the I, I learned the, this word from you today dim dim no not from you from my other okay. friend <laughs> dim uh, presence like redeem 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 uh, presence of body by situations yeah so the desire of of uh, to be present and the the reality that that limit mm. uh, limits your your desire is is always a conflict for everyone yeah, yeah so especially those who work with bodies yeah. well let's talk about bodies let's let's return to the um to, to to the exhibition i mean this is an exhibition that is based around live performance i mean we we structured the entire original, I think it may be in a hundred day exhibition mm -hmm. <laughs> around um, the presentation of key, perform key performances of yours. Um, some of these performances were, pre were made up to 20 years ago and some of them were made for different cultural contexts and perform first performed in, 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 in different places. I'm really curious about how you go about um, preparing mm -hmm. or even just thinking about Reperformance. You've already said that this is not an issue for you because it's you see it as a kind of a living process that you're. It's always a, a constant relationship that you have um, with with the work. But of course, you know we're very lucky that the last performance that you will do for us is Butter Dance. Mm. It's physically um, demanding. I mean, I think is probably the the most polite way of saying it. But but I'm, I'm you know this is something I often ask of performance artists is that who who reperform things is it how does the body feel how how does the how do you, how do you deal as a performance artist with your body that's aging um, yeah so t t talk us through and we might go to um, let's show the the next slide which is going to be of of um, maybe you want to introduce some of the <laughs> Yeah. Even this uh, work was made around five years ago, you know, and, and I, um, when I made, you know, it's a consequence, it's a choice I, I knew it's just the beginning of my career. You know, it's just my decision to, okay, this is a performance that I'm just going to do just this time, or I decide, no, I will not do this again after experiencing the performance myself. But then there are performances of the, Oh, I want to redo this again once in a life, or one another in another time in my life. Mm. And for butter dance, for example, let's switch to butter dance. I really, I was very clear when I was young. This this work was created when I was still a student, by the way. And it was twenty one years ago. Twenty one years ago is a long time. <laughs> but my daughter was two years already, so, so you know, so. It's a long time. It's a it's a different um, uh, condition of my personal life, or different condition of my social environment, and and also also different uh, body shape. You know, like my body is 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 a, is is my how do you say? It's a landscape of my life also. Mm. And so uh, once I did this, and I thought, okay, this is going going to be a, a lifelong project that I'm going to do. So I want to experience, I, I really want to experience uh, when, I, when I'm doing this with, now I'm 52 years old and then later when, when, I'm, when I'll be 60, what, what will it like? I, mean, I don't dance like when I was 21 years ago. You know? No one dances like they were 21 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but, but sometimes, uh, but that is not my personal experience, but people will have a new reality about this work. Hmm. 
people will have an, a new interpretation. People will not project like a kinky young Asian girl, uh, lady uh, using uh, wearing uh, red shoes, uh, but then probably, oh yeah, at this age, like they, they will reflect a different image, you know. And, and I think uh, I also wanted to experience this. It's not about my self experience, but also like to be here in Jakarta with the public in Jakarta to, to share this uh, core uh, intention of butter dance with the people here. It's because every time I, I, I did it so many times, more, more than 25 times, I think, in different, different places in this world and experience different energy of the public too. Mm. Last time I did in 2014, I think in, in Japan at the TPAM uh, in, in Yokohama. And so, um, but it was as part of a lecture. And, um, but I still did the, the Bata dance. So here I will do the Bata dance in a totally different condition of my soul, my body, my mind, and my social environment. Our social environment is different. I did this, by the way, in 2006 in, in Jakarta at the Good Institute. Mm. That was uh, six years after I made this work. And um, it was packed in, in, at the Good Institute Hall in Jakarta. It was my first time, my first time I ever performed in Indonesia. I came with butter dance. It was how many years ago now? You know, 15 years mm. ago. And and now I'm going to do this. I'm very happy. I'm very, I'm very excited to <laughs> see what will happen. You know, because uh, I think from that weight I gain like maybe I, I don't tell. <laughs> you can guess, but don't guess too much. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Malasi, we're also very excited. And um, despite the the challenges over the last two years, I mean, I think that we're. We're very lucky to be able to finally complete the exhibition and to do it in a way where we have got some of the, a, a big concentration of, of, of key works. And I know the next two weeks will be a lot for you, but I think we're very, I mean, we're all very grateful. Um, and also I think our audiences this, are, are grateful to be able to see a, a body of work, not just single works, but a body of uh, a, a body of work over, yeah. over time. Yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm very happy that this is one of a dream. You know, I can't wait for many years to have this kind of solos because not many institutions are very open with a solo exhibition or performance, mm. unless you are, you know, someone like Marina Abramovich <laughs> or something like that. But this is my country who delivers me a, a solo exhibition at the museum. Mm. And I'm very, very, very happy uh, to do this uh, in Indonesia, in mm. Jakarta. And, um, you know, to, to, be, to see my work being set in, in such a ex beautiful exhibition and who, which consider also my journey of making, you know, there are some documentary films, mm -hmm. there, there are films of my teachers like Boris Nisloni and Marina Abramo is also screen. There are my delegated works, mm -hmm. delegated performance work also presented. So it's, it's not a re retrospective, but also it's not an early introduction about my mm -hmm. practice. It's, it's an, not just an overview actually, you know, it's something that is delivering really like a kind of a, the red thread of my the character mm. or characteristics of my work. Even you, uh, you know, you allow me to uh, to present my hapuslah uh, tapi bukan air matamu. You know, like the, mm. my drawings, and and then people can erase. You know, even that work is you know uh, inspired. Well, you know, we're very happy. Uh, Russia, but you know, like yeah. even, even, even that is uh, not, not directly my performance work, but uh, it's a work that is the, 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 the public participation. Yeah. You know. Well, thank you for joining us. And um, for those of you who are at home, this for the next two weeks, um, the, the exhibition will be up for, for only two more weeks. We have got Check Online. We have got uh, some of the, some uh, really big pro big exhibition at big performances every Friday, Saturday and Sunday over the next 
of the next two weeks, including transaction of hollows and um, also butter dances, as, as, as we see here. Let's open up to questions if we if we have any. Um, uh, while we while we have Malati in the room, uh, very happy to answer any questions. Okay, so here is one. This is a question from uh, Gusti in Jakarta. Hi, Malati. I'm a fan since I was in high school. Seeing your performance, I can tell that this performance requires so much physical energy. What, how do you prepare for your performance, especially that long durational months? Oh, 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 oh Gusti. Okay. So, um, you know, I. My, you can also ask my assistant, he's the witness of my life. <laughs> Normally I, you know, I prepare my soul, I prepare my mind and, and you know, there is a, a long uh, practices that, that is embodied with my daily life. And, and to, to hold um, this, you know, long durational performance is not just to train about the endurance, about, about uh, about the physical endurance, but it's also about mental, mental state. How to keep you know your mental state on the same intention. How to let go your ego. How to receive the energy that is coming during your actions. It's how to uh, control your presence. Not about physical presence, but uh, you know the inner presence and um, and how honest you are doing your work. I think performance art is about honest mind. When you do a, like, like for example, like 12 hours, uh, 12 hours uh, grinding charcoal. So and then people would think, what would you, what was, what did you think? Uh, what, what is in your mind when you're doing your work for 12 hours? And then I have my intention. I made a long research, it's seven years research of, this for to make this work about about the poverty about homelessness and homeless people and so on but then when i grind and then this action because i'm how do you say i'm focusing on on uh, this work dedicating to that 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 uh, level of life that part of life in, in our universe then this action also delivers uh, my soul into another world that I cannot describe because it's not planned. So I will think about my mother. No, it's not like that. Mm. I will think about my daughter. No, I will think about money. No, of course not. You know, <laughs> but 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 then when it, when I grind it, then it, it reflects also to something, and that makes the um, that, that that's what 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 I said before, like completing the work, mm. and that is a language of you know communicating with people. So that. Because I'm not acting, because I'm not, um, you know, like presenting my artificial side, then uh, I feel uh, more connected with the public too. And probably the public can, you know, I believe that everyone has uh, sensitivity uh, of connecting with with what they see. Why people like that painting and not like that painting? You know, why why, why people like and dislike things? or why people are interested or not interested to think. And because they have their own baggage or, or, form, or you know, like constructions of, of uh, you know, their interpretation uh, cage. <laughs> so, so I think endurance, my preparation is also about settling my mind, how, how honest I can be with my work, how close I can be with my body and, and uh, of course, yeah, like practical physical exercise, like to control breathing, to control even your, when you have to go to the toilet, what do you eat, what time you eat the last, you know, or, what, or how much you drink. And this, I have this knowledge because of experience. So this, this is a very important knowledge that looks simple. Like for example, for a long duration of performance, like the, uh, I'm a ghost in my own house. I, I have to eat rice and egg, for example, only. You know, and, and then uh, and then tea, black tea, but latest one hour before the performance. If I have, if I eat, I consume something one hour, uh, like less than one hour before the performance, I will be very starving in the fifth hours. So this is, I, I, I my body is um, is a constant 
changing book, <laughs> like I have to read all the time. Yeah, thank you. And there's a question from Ade Hanif. Uh, I wonder if you ever feel that you once failed or did not succeed to connect to an audience. Um, how did you have overcome that? You once failed or did not succeed to connect to an audience. Sure, there is something that is um, maybe no, actually not not many experiences like this because I maybe it's like uh, I'm like I feel failure, I feel not succeeded with the performance because uh, I could have done this longer, you know, then then it probably give more time for myself to to give a process or or this work is. Uh, like oh the costume is not suitable, not not comfortable. Okay, next time I will change the costume. Just simple like that because I do not practice before doing my performance. Uh, normally I do not practice. Of course I'm not practicing twelve hours grinding before I I do perform twelve hours performance or three hours standing uh, for Alilino and and but you know like um public. I don't expect anything from the public. They can be themselves. They can be with their mind. They can be, you know, uh, like they can like like when when people watch a painting or a sculpture. The, the the sculpture is not standing all the time next to the sculpture and telling people you have to think like this. Look, this is you have to see from this shape. No, never, you know. And so once once my work is seen as what it is, and I'm I should be okay. I'm okay too. Yeah. I never felt really uh, fail because I don't aim for succeeds in in kind of in the in the common sense. Yeah. Well, I, I like this question because we were going to talk a little bit about this in terms of um, education. So this mm -hmm. is from Nina. Um, besides being a performance artist, you also provide a training ground for many young performance artists. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the first things you teach them about when you start training? Maybe you might give a little bit of a context about some of the things that you're doing right now in terms of supporting a community of young artists. I try, I try, actually, I tried already a long time. I begin, I started even when I was in Germany, like to arrange a performance art laboratorium in collaboration with Boris Nisconi uh, to make PALA project. Um, I came back to Indonesia once a year because I also want to do that. And I want to connect people who are not only from, from the visual art background, but also from dance and, and literature, and also like to, to have a kind of a laboratory rather than a school at that time, so that people can exchange the way they practice within the performance art practice internationally, but in a very simple manner, you know, like not, not like a big festival, not like a big event, like in the, in the, exclusive building, very uh, humble and very um, uh, suitable to the Indonesian situation, yeah, financially. So um, 2012, in 2011, 2012, I, I decided to slowly to go back and I, I rent a studio for myself. And then I slowly share the studio for, for public activity to provide spaces for people to train themselves, to make a laboratory, to uh, we provide also like um, organized, uh, very simple and but well organized uh, festival and, and workshops and film screening to offer another kind of uh, practice and to offer another way of learning uh, rather than uh, academic way of, of you know, learning. Uh, art practices. And so it's very tough. It's very tough because uh, not everyone is interested in the performance art, of course. Uh, but since in Solo, there are like, uh, there's a more performing arts academy, like dance, uh, the EC Surakata is very famous with their dance uh, department and music department, which are based on the traditional, uh, traditional art practices. And, and so I like to intertwine this just to give an alternative, there is another possibility. You know, what helped me to survive is also like, because the school facilitated the possibility what you can be after finishing school. You cannot be 
not all of us can be a famous artist. Not all of us can still practice in making artwork. So then I think the school uh, uh, is very, was very good if they can facilitate the reality. You know, like, yeah, you can be a postman. It's a job, you know, it doesn't mean that you are a lower person. You know, you can be, you can work in the shopping center. Look at our artist colleagues in Japan, in everywhere except Indonesia probably. But Indonesia now is more open also like to people, you know, like cross discipline uh, jobs, you know. But um, the reality is not that everyone becomes famous artists. So fame is not the, not the, for example, not the, the aim of, 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 of study. Becoming famous it will come with your work, quality of your work. Yeah. <laughs> because nowadays um, many young people also seeking like a shortcut to be to be um, very quick well known and I think uh, that's this uh, social media work is make that possible but it's not it's, it's not the sustainable way to to survive in the future I would say well Philippe has got a question about sustainability in terms of your own practice so uh, Philippe Purot is asking, um, because you work with institutions, how important are the institutions in in making your work happen? Um, and I suppose really just sustaining just sustaining the practice as well. Uh huh. Is it possible to is it possible to work outside of that framework? Of course, you know, like what I've been doing in my studio and what I've been doing in with with the young people, what I've been doing with uh, with you know, I actually I'm a I'm quite free. <laughs> Because I start from underground, I start from a very uh, basic um, education uh, that that lead me to understand economical situation. That well, I have my body. That's also one reason I why I don't paint, why I don't make film because it's very hard for me to buy a film, uh, camera, and and uh, paint is expensive. The canvas and all the materials and even sculpture. So. There is no reason for me to uh, not to make an, a work because I have my materials always attached with me wherever I breathe, and so uh, and that economically is is very supportive, you know. But of course, to work with an institution is is always challenging and always exciting. So, like uh, for example, like I have worked with, for example, for this transactions of Hello, thank you to Lilith Performance Studio in Malmo because. Uh, they can get support uh, from the Swedish government to support me to make a work that is my dream, you know, like, like, and then, oh, how, like, how big, like, you can dream big, then let's, let's work together. So, and then, and then it becomes you know, the transactions of Polo. They commissioned this work and, and I was very happy and I uh, was very excited to, you know, like to, to experience this process of collaboration. But not, not many of my works are commissions. I'm not collaborating a lot in terms of making the work commissioned by whom, you know. Uh, like for example, like Behind the Line was, um, is, uh, you know, supported by the Singapore uh, Vienna, mm. for example, for the first time. Like I collaborate, of course, with the, with the, with the museum, with the Sam Singapore Art Museum, like, how far it can be, uh, uh, how big or how far it can be realized. You know, so then um, there is, of course, there are a lot of compromise. But for for example, I'm trained like to make like a like the promise is very cheap. You know, I can perform the promise uh, outdoor. I can perform in the white cube. I can perform in the gallery. I can perform in the market. I can perform, I did perform uh, butter dance also in the church, for example, or <laughs> in the outdoor situations. I, on the concrete platform, I, I did. It's not butter dance that I did in the Hebel Theater every time, just that, that first one time only. So it's, it, for me, it's, um, my work is not in a space frame or institutional frame. Um, Hmm. You know, like institution is very interesting because they provide like, it's like, it looks, my work looks very chic. Look at my exhibition, you know. <laughs> well, we're very proud that it looks nice and chic. Then. And I, I'm like, wow, this 
too too chic, you know, like like remembering my own process that it comes from the uh, you know, like my small atelier in Germany, my small studio in the, in the basement, and uh, the idea is coming uh, along, or I'm making a sketch or doing things like while well, I'm keeping my daughter or preparing food, and you know, and then it comes to museum, and then like it looks nice, but you know, uh, the way to get there is a long way. So that um, institutions, that's why I think. Uh, it's important also because this exhibition is is trying also to understand my process. It's not just about the work is suitable to be put in the museum, but all the mm. curators like Asep and and mm. Asri, Aaron, Ina, I'm very thankful to all of you, Cindy, to, to understand my process of behind mm. behind the work, how it comes, and then how it should be put. Like for example, the artifacts of my, the costume, even the shoes and so how, how they are put, you know? And it was a long discussion because it looked, does it look like uh, a window shopping or not? You know, mm. I'm so worried, you know, because the process of making is, is not uh, like to make like a fancy thing, mm. you know? But, but in the terms of archival, uh, as the archive materials, and I, I think that's the best way. I think the I think there's another way of reading uh, Philippe's question as oh, well. Oh, sorry. Is you know um, because we're also talk, having this conversation in a moment of real disruption. Things and things are not as 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 they were previously. And actually, we should be encouraging our institutions and our supporters and those foundations and governments to be commissioning, to be putting resources to artists so that they can not have to sustain themselves through basic transactions but through their imagination so that there are two parts to it i think that that yes there is a kind of um you know the kind of institutional critique of the practice but also let's demand our let's ask our our supporters to support Okay, what, but do you think something gets lost is that atmosphere with your daughter or others, a process coming from a more so called messy context? Um, something gets lost of that atmosphere? Mm, no, because it, it's embodied in the work. So, no matter how the, the work is presented and where, actually, then it, it is so it's. It, it is attached with the process of, of realizing that work. I cannot avoid, you know, well, you know, I don't know when I die, what would be with the butter dance? And you can see the butter dance probably in the documentation at the Tate Modern. Uh, no, it's called like Tate, by the way. But, you know, then you, you, you just saw the video, like you saw the videos of documentations of, of Anna Mendieta, but you never really know. How she prepared, uh, you know, like her silhouette works. Uh, how how many people helped her, or did she do it alone? On or you know, like what, in what state of of life she was when she was doing it in reality? Only she knew. And I also, as a, because I'm the one who is making the work, so I only knew when I saw, uh, <clears throat> for example, the the shoes. I remember the shoes I bought, you know, I remember what, how much it was, how much money I had in my pocket, how much it was, you know, the, how much it was, it cost, you know, and, and how, what kind of situation. So this, I cannot deliver uh, like in text as a narration of the work. It's my experience. It's just my, how artists see their work installed in a, in a museum is sometimes different. So I don't feel I have to, to present all the, the process, like, you know, like the messy life <laughs> behind. And then now the messy life is like somehow like erased and then put in the white box, you know. But it but that is something that, that is unavoidable. I don't have to put my work in my kitchen, right? Because then I want to show the reality of the work. So I guess that, that kind of thing is consequences of, of artists. I never thought that my work is going to the museum anyway. Never. You know, I, I never thought, never dreamed to become like, uh, to have like a solo show in, in some way. <laughs> you know, I, I started my career quite late when, when I was 26 and, and uh, like how many years now? 
And so, but, but I'm very thankful to life because, because I think it, because I never expected that it comes to me. <laughs> so, like um, someone was asking me recently, uh, uh, yeah, why, why you, don't, you don't want to, to join NFT? I said, mm. I, well, I have nothing to lose. I'm not afraid to die. You know, I, why, why do I have to, to join that? You know, I don't, I don't have to try everything. I, I'm doing uh, things with, you know, with my nearest capacity. I'm not dreaming of something, something beyond my capacity. And if something is like NFT is my beyond my, is at the moment, I would say, beyond my capacity, I don't have to force myself. It even I, I give an extra effort to, to deal with the live streaming. And then, and then additionally, you know, like NFT, uh, although I'm following it, you know, I'm, I'm following because many artist friends and colleagues are doing it. Um, I, I keep thinking about this, but at the moment, especially because I'm using my body too. And, um, and I don't want to erase the quality. Okay, were there other, any other questions before we wrap up? Um, I might just remind the audience actually that, that these performances that are coming up will not be streamed. So if you are interested in seeing them, you have to come in, in person, of course, um, physically distanced and all of those things, but um, uh, they will be presented live in, inside, inside the museum and they will not be streamed. Um, I think that we've come to the natural end of, of, the, um, of this conversation. And I wanted to firstly thank all of our audience for being there with us. We do hope to see you in the, in the museum at some point in the, next, in the next two weeks. I wanted to thank you, Malati, for bearing with us and for oh, testing you. us and for, <laughs> um, um, for your good humour, actually. I think, that, I think that it's remarkable that we, you know, probably this time last year we couldn't see an end, but now that we've nearly, we can do the <laughs> thing that we said that we wanted to do and, and, yeah. and um, it's, it's exciting. And I, I'm, I think that everyone on staff is excited to see what will happen. Yeah, and, and thank you so much for all the staff of Machan and the, the team, the, you are so amazing. And uh, it's been, uh, we've been creating like a long relationship now, <laughs> long durational relationship. And, and um, there's like almost no conflicts. We enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. Everyone is enjoying the process, even there were some difficulties and, and tough situations. And we try to, you know, like somehow to find solution together, discuss together mm -hmm. and, and amazingly no conflict. That, that I, I feel very, um, thankful and happy about this. And uh, yeah, the last two weeks, I hope people come. And they will. Yeah, because yeah, probably, <laughs> probably the, uh, who knows, you know, for the next exhibition, like, like this is, I don't know when it's gonna be seen in, in Jakarta. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, and back to you, Nindi. All right. Thank you so much, Aaron. And thank you so much, Mamlati. So that was in conversation with Melati Surya Dharma, performance, the body and the screen. Thank you for the audience, for your questions and for your time. So Why Let the Chicken Run is on display until 14 of November and Museum Machan is already open. So tickets are available online. And just like what Erin said, uh, there are several performances by Melati herself, as well as dedicated performances. So do check Museum Machan's website and social media for your schedule and to book your ticket. Once again, thank you and stay safe.